but probably it's going to be on the first time on the agenda is the presentation of both our Do we have anybody here from Ministry Hall? If you would, please stand up. Tell us your name and tell us what this organization is. My name is Walker. I'm in the city of Gainesville, Walker. Sorry, I didn't hear your question. If you would just tell us your name, which organization you're with? Sure. Ben Gerard from the University of Oklahoma. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to see everybody back here in the crowd. And uh, today we need to recognize the Money Bill, so Dr. Brown, principal of Money Bill Academy. Please come forward and talk about our ecosystem. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
to help keep students engaged throughout the lesson. She is always willing to learn new things as well as reflect upon current and past ideas and lessons, continuously looking for ways to improve so that she is always the best version of herself or her students. She is very proactive and a great problem solver. She helps other teachers in the school, not just those on her grade level. One can always count on her to be dependable and to go above and beyond for her students. Her positive and professional attitude is contagious. Not only is she a teacher who cares about the academic success of her students, she's an educator who cares about her students' social emotional needs, their hopes, and dreams. It is my honor to announce that Mrs. Evelyn Cruz is our certified staff award winner for the Heroes of the Herd at Monday Hill Academy. Good evening, everybody. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Amy Buckington, and I am the assistant principal at Monday Hill. Tonight, before I um, announce our short classified staff member, I'd like to um, read a few comments that were said about her. Our school is better entirely because of her. Our school cannot function properly unless we have a safe, clean environment for our students. When our custodial team was short staffed, she stepped in and built the void and did so with a positive attitude. She is kind to every child, a hard worker, and silently serves her school and community every day. Es amable con todos los niños, trabajadora, y sirve en silencio a su escuela y la comunidad todos los días. She smiles and shares her joy with students and others around her. Ella sonríe y comparte su alegría con todos los estudiantes y otras personas en su alrededor. It is my honor to announce that Ms. Celeste Perez, one of our day porters, is our certified staff award winner for the Heroes of the Herd at Monday Hill Academy. It was an honor to announce that the Señora Celeste Perez, la cual es una de nuestras portadoras del día, es nuestra ganadora del premio del personal clasificado para los Heroes of the Herd que se, tra se traduce en el este de baño en Monday Hill Academy. Ms. Celeste, please come forward to be recognized. We also give the honor to recognize our young authors that are here tonight with their families. So I'd like to ask our graduate elementary schools, Dr. Lee Sears, to come up and recognize our winners.
Good evening. When I call your name, if you will come forward, parents feel free to come forward as well and get a better picture. Our kindergarten winner from the Jojo Wilson Intelligence Academy was Miss May Bruner, and her paper was entitled The Way the Dinosaur Saved the Other Dinosaur. And she had some beautiful illustrations. Yes, we can do one at a time. That'd be great. Do you want to read up anything in the picture? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> New Holland Mount Academy was Deborah Molina Escobar, and her work or his work was entitled, there she is, her work was entitled My New Dog. Thank Our second grade winner was from the Notable Sports Intelligence Academy, Ava Vermette, and her work was entitled Never Let a Dragon Speak. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Our third grade winner was from Centennial Arts Academy, Anjali Patel, and the work was entitled The Crazy Middle Schoolers. <laughs> Winner was from the Notable School of Philosophy Academy, Virginia Munn, and her work is titled Overboard.
So the third grader already knows that the craziest happened in middle school. <laughs> Either that's a little bit of foreshadowing or they have no respect when it's in middle school. <laughs> if I could ask Deputy Superintendent Priscilla Collins to join me as we recognize our district teachers of the year. Teachers of the Year, if you will, we call your name. Please stay up for this. We'll get a group picture from Centennial Arts Academy, Ms. Rebecca Crew. From another multiple intelligence academy, Ms. Lee Kelly. From Fair Street International Academy, Ms. Karen McCuskey. Gainesville Exploration Academy, Ms. Danny Vivian. For Monday meal, while she is not here because of the newborn baby, let's go ahead and recognize Ms. Bridget Mendoza. From Gainesville Middle School, Ms. Alexandra Dalton. Gainesville High School, Ms. Shelley Glass. <laughs> and from New Holland Knowledge Academy, both the school representative and the district representative, and the recipient of a $10,000 Alistair Foundation check, Ms. Cynthia Kim.
One big way that I have for meeting Allison last year is how she carefully kept up with her students who were set to graduate. Mm -hmm. She watched their grades and reminded them when senior items were due, such as ordering their cap and gown. Allison was honored last week at a banquet, as uh, Dr. Williams said. I have a little gift to pass along to her today as well. Thank you, Allison, for all of your hard work and dedication to our students with special needs. Please join us, Allison. Well, we did not meet last week. Last week was officially Georgia School Board of Appreciation. And so the five board members you have here have over 50 years of serving this community. In a more role capacity, I'll know 32 of those go to Mr. Mitchell. We still have more than 50 years of board service. And so I just want to say thank you to my board uh, publicly. You know what it means to me, I believe. Uh, we get to share a lot of time together. Uh, I feel like over the last five years, we've had an opportunity to build great relationships, continue the one game from mantra. And we have some gifts for you back there at your chairs. One uh, is a construction hat because of all the construction that we've had going on in the district <laughs> for a number of years. Uh, number two is we do have some uh, polo shirts that are ordered for you that you can wear as spring is rolling around. The number three, the most important one, we have thank you notes from our students. We gave you students to the school board. Thank you all so much for your time and dedication to this community. God please join me. Thank you. Again. Also, if I could ask Mr. Denise Hallstrap to please stand and please support us tonight. So if you look at the back, Ms. Denise is going to be joining our team video. Vote tonight to replace Ms. Quinnell Brown as principal of Fair Street International Academy. So please join me in welcoming her to our team. Now, folks, board of conversation. Two things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, our congratulations to our own Joy Griffin, who was named Young Woman of the Year for Nashville and Hall County. Joy, uh, stand up and take a bow, please. <laughs> Secondly, to our students and parents and staff who helped us with the accreditation visit and review. It's an every five year cycle that we must be accredited students, parents, and staff, and us participated in interviews and questionnaires. Thank you for that. We passed. We made a good grade. Uh, the superintendent and staff is reviewing the findings uh, to bring to us later, but thank you all if you participated in that. Thank you. Uh, this does end our recognition portion of the meeting. Uh, usually, now is a good time before we start our formal business. Thank you. <laughs> um, I believe if you'll ask Mr. Stewart to sign it for you, he'd be glad to. <laughs> You get one.
Um, and as a result of our intense focus on that growth, students are taking ownership of their data, so are the teachers. And the last diagnostic was taken in the middle of the school year. We are right, right now, or this, I think, for the remainder of March or for the first week in April, that's when we finished taking the last diagnostic. So the information I'm about to give you is based on the middle of the year. So there's a report that lets us know about our annual typical growth. Now, at the halfway point, 50% of the school year, we were already at 63% meeting our growth. So that's really good. I'd like to give a shout out to two grade levels. Our fourth, fourth grade students were already at 83%. And our second grade students were at 77%. And that was at halfway point of the year. So I'm super, very, very proud of them. And so we look forward to seeing what this next diagnos diagnostic test lets us know about their math growth. Um, I know time doesn't allow for me to tell you much more, but I'm super excited to be able to share with you some of the good things um, and also about something that's coming up next year. I, I know we've already presented this information in the past, but we are officially changing the name from Monday Mill Learning Academy to Monday Mill Arts Academy. And we can't wait to see what that brings to our students. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, Dr. Brown, I'm not trying to stump you here. You said you had 634. Do you recall off the top of your head what it was when the school actually broke? We were slotted for 333 students. We ended up having a little bit more than that. Any other questions, Dr. Brown? Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> So I hear the motion to approve Roman 7. The motion on the adoption of the minutes. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Spence, second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Motion cheers. Our first action item with Dr. Williams, the midterm legislative supplement. I believe you saw an email I sent late last week to all of our employees. Um, the amended budget uh, from the legislature that has been signed by the governor last week has a $2,000 supplement in there for our employees. There will be some not covered, uh, but in previous discussions, we felt like it was right to go ahead and award $2,000 full-time employees, $1,000 for part-time employees, and we would uh, have this as a part of the March check that would be going out here just in the next uh, week and a half. Funds that are not covered uh, by the amount we receive from the state we will be using the ARP ESSER 3 funds to cover that. Motion to approve. Got one. Motion by Mr. Spencer, second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Motion carries. Mr. Niles, got a couple of items. Actually, four items. First item is the uh, Bobby Green Field site. Yes, sir. Uh, our request this evening. Is to replace the sign that deck by the Broom Field. Uh, we put out an RFP following our uh, process. We had one proposed bidder that came in, received an interp LLC out of Buford for $155,300. Replaces all of the sign, replaces all of the sand, uh, gets us all the way down to drainage and irrigation. And we'll also look at drainage and irrigation as part of this process. What is the timeline? Uh, we're hoping that approve tonight. We're hoping to get started immediately after graduation and have it all in place and have the field ready for next school year. So the summer heat uh, does not have a negative effect on the soft place? No, not with irrigation and proper uh, 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 watering, all of that. Uh, we're hoping uh, that it'll, it'll be fine. Mr. Niles, I know it's been a few years since we, we've done this, but uh, just out of curiosity, in an ideal scenario, how long does sod last until we have to redo it again? Uh, this has been 12, 20 years. Can't call it free, Mr. Niles. So that's the problem. And I believe uh, we planned it the last few years. Yes. yes. And I believe that this would take it, what, about four inches lower than it is now? This also means we don't have to sit in the scorching sun with the red rally. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be back right inside. Yeah. You, you know, know that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to be longer inside now. 
We did a practice field okay. and that would be a motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Got a second by Dr. Randy. Do you need more questions? All in favor? Mr. Jerry's. Right. Thank you. Right. Just an extra minute to approve the GMT and contract for new three story education addition there at the high school campus. Uh, you'll see some photos and some of the, uh, this three story. Uh, so you'll see floor layouts. Let me just give you a quick synopsis of what the building will be. It'll be 103,807 square feet, uh, 61 IUs, uh, 47 new classrooms, six new science labs, two new business and computer labs, two new marketing labs, two new art rooms, uh, one digital art room, new broadcast video uh, production lab, uh, as well as new high school administration suite. Um, as we looked at uh, design with architect, we did have input from school leadership and department heads as well. And the RFP, 23 million, $987,083. This group is fall of 23. Fall of 23. That, that's our hope, again, based on the availability of equipment and material. <clears throat> we weren't told we had a 14 month lead time right, on one piece in particular. So we're at mercy of anybody else of shipping and cost right now. This will complete all of our bond projects. Uh, Adrian, I do not know how to read uh, architects. The uh, thing that I do hear uh, faculty and staff in the in the building, the main building that we're in, mm -hmm. complain about lack of adult restroom space or adult break space. So may I just assume that issue is in the new building? Correct. We believe that there's uh, adequate adult restrooms. Uh, again, we have input from school leadership, department heads, as well as we look at design. And will this, the connectivity to the cafeteria and media center be only on the ground floor? The ground floor and the elevator on the second floor. Ground as well, that we bridge walk or covered walkway to the new building on the second. Okay, it'll be three stories, as, and our cafeteria media is two stories, so mm -hmm. it's going to foreshadow that. Okay, connectivity on ground level and second. And second. Okay. And this will eliminate classes that are not great. And modules. Yes. And modules. Have a macho burning. Have a macho burning. If you put it down at the channel, that would be a happy day for me. Actually, uh, Mr. Green actually wants to operate the swing ball for the macho. Go ahead, Jim. I will say, if you look at the second picture there, uh, Mr. Nimmy, if you might have a departure, uh, this is a recent rendering that the architects gave us. So you see that canopy area, that is an outdoor workspace for our art classrooms. So that is alongside Century Place. We'll be able to display some more work across the campus. Uh, you can see it is covered. So working outside, but also playing outside. The bottom floor does have a lot of your uh, remaining CTAE courses. Uh, the top two floors are more academic based. We will turn the existing main office more into a student services area that of course connects there to the hub. And your main office will be here. One thing that we always hear is, where do I go when I'm on campus? Well, so now when you go, you're going to know where the main office is. It's going to be parking closest uh, to Century Place. This building won't affect the horseshoe layout and mm -hmm. all that else that it's saying. That's correct. This building will actually go there next to the new kitchen cafeteria in, in the space that's already been graded out where the existing uh, cafeteria. And you do have, if you drive along Century Place, you'll notice uh, there's a parking lot where a lot of the construction and workers park. That is an existing parking lot that would back up to this building. 
So it kind of shows you a footprint of, of where all of that's standing. So the first layer of that parking lot is done, and then uh, this will be sitting in front of it. I'll to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Any other questions? All those in favor? Motion carried. Mr. Smith, you said you had a motion to approve safety concerns at the high school. This this fencing project allows us to start there on Century Place at uh, this time in Valentine Center at the practice field allows us to take uh, take fencing all the way up uh, towards Centennial across all the way to the back of the uh, pavilion uh, all the way to the band building adjacent to Alpha Trail. So it encloses all of that area. So the fencing will be, it'll have 24 uh, center uh, brick columns as well as uh, iron pick space. There'll be two main gates. One will be in between the Valentine Center and Student Activity Center. It will say Bruce Miller Field as you go into those gates. And then beside the band, uh, the current band building, inside that little parking lot, there will be another gate. Uh, then you can either access it from an upper level or a lower level. Is there any Y'all want to give me substantial access? Now there will be, there will be one on that side. Yeah, that okay, yeah. There. Now, because that, that field will still be their field space. And all, the, all of our elementaries have field space, and so that is still continuous field space. It's just they're not going to have double gates opening up. There's a more individual. It's funded social spots, five eight says $480,593. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Dr. Randy. All those in favor? Motion to change. And finally, the uh, band building. Yes. Again, so as we, uh, we again look at uh, uh, Christmas, uh, summer, also 23, the existing three story building, we're looking at going in and we'll be bringing that for you, but to also <coughs> totally. Redo the entire existing three story building there at high school. The classrooms, uh, hallways, uh, you've already approved that this summer we'll do HVAC replacements on one floor, so it'll be second floor, painting on classroom walls and everything to where the existing three story building will mirror the new three story building. So then, as we look at our van building, it is to do extensive renovations there as well. Replacing all the uh, flooring with LBT tile, flooring painting inside the exterior painting, uh, replacing all plumbing fixtures, uh, light switches, light fixtures with LED lighting, uh, looking at putting a TPL roof on top of the roof. And uh, the request is again funding plus five excess, $115,000. Was the van not to have space to be extended? And we, we don't know what this kind of space will be used okay. So it would be general purpose. Correct. It needs to be replaced. It's going to bud up to the pavilion. We have cost references to do this while there's construction going on in the area. So we're not uh, doing that. Today. We'll manage this project in the house. Any other questions? Very much to be approved. Motion to approve. A motion by Mr. Morholz. Got a second by Dr. Randy. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is the uh, option video broadcast parts. <laughs> Good evening. I'm bringing before you a motion tonight to approve the purchase of five 80 broadcast carts in total amount of seventy-six thousand. I'm about to do it. I'm about to do exactly what we talked about. Seventy-six thousand one hundred twenty dollars. These will be purchased from consolidated funds. Each of the schools chose to purchase one of these carts. Uh, Nutty Mill does have one and has had one for some time. Um, and Dr. Brown was able to share the experience that they had, the positive experience of being able to use it. 
Motion to approve. Yes. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Any questions? So, is that <laughs> so, it's a video broadcast card, and what that allows us to do is to connect to our network. We can record the video as, you know, for whatever a news program or someone coming into the building that goes into our Safari Montage platform and becomes available if anyone wants to use it. But another thing that allows us to do is to broadcast in real time. And, and others in the building can access that video in real time by going into the Safari Montage. So it's kind of a dual purpose a tool for a school system. And Dr. Brown uses it every day for their morning announcement and does that uh, live. We got a motion to take All those in favor? Mr. Jerry. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. <coughs> And then you and uh, Ms. Freeman. I'm, I'm representing Ms. Freeman tonight. Um, and we're bringing an item before you tonight to uh, uh, request approval for the purchase, purchase of classroom audio systems. So this uh, technology allows us to place speakers throughout the room. If you think about a sound wave, it's a wave. And so the wave is always biggest where it starts and then it gets smaller as you move away from the starting point, which means the sound is always going to be loudest where the sound originates. And people who are further away are always going to be just by the nature of sound having a harder time hearing. This is not the kind of sound system that gives us this booming effect that we hear in here. The intent here is just to enhance the audio to the point that everyone can hear very well, very clearly. We know from research that this uh, technology does improve student achievement. We also know that this helps reduce teacher fatigue because you're not having to project as much when, you, when you're using it in the classroom. Um, so we come before you tonight to ask for approval uh, to, to go with option two, we have a couple options as you see in the packet. We're going to go with option two, which is the sound system only. And the total amount for this is $225,800. And this will be coming from Ms. Freeman's consolidated funds. So, just as a, a little bit of a reminder of consolidated funds, those are all of our federal funds that go to the school level. And anything that is approved above 30, of course, has to come, come before the board. But the other side of it is this has to follow along with the school improvement plan, which follows along with their intent and purpose of federal programs, which of course then has to be budgeted. We recently received carryover funds in excess of a million dollars from the previous year. And so that's why you're seeing, I believe, like last, last time we met, instruction brought forward those books. You see what's happening here at the middle school um, and, and a few other things that have been passed tonight and will be coming up in just a moment. So, those consolidated fund spaces are all of our federal programs side of the follow the plan at each individual school. And this technology is already being built into GMS West as well? It is being placed in the media center at GMS West. As far as I know, that's the only space that it's currently slated for. But I will say, <laughs> we will be talking about this option as a future project. Um, I was planning on discussing that with you in an upcoming board training. Um, so this had been on my radar as something that I believe will be a very useful tool. I have experience with it in other places. One of the reasons why we bring this particular company to you is because it is the company that won the bid for uh, Gainesville Middle School's West Campus. And there are many, many schools across the state and south. And so with this initiative that we're talking about tonight, it will be in every classroom that GMS needs. It will be. Yes, sir. Motion to approve. And a motion by Mr. Schmidt. Second. And a second by Mr. Schmidt. Any other questions? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Next to last item on the action items uh, are the presentation of the February financial statements. Mr. 
question. Um, Mr. Miles and I, and possibly um, others, would want to go to the school and invite the principal to walk the playground with us. I've already been through and I have an idea of where I think each piece should go. I want to make sure that they agree and we can all take a look at that and match that. Motion to adopt. Second. Yeah, motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Um, any discussion on it? I, I have uh, three. Uh, can Dr. Cruz and you and Ms. Wales bring us a update on the conditions of the nurse? Thank you, everyone. Ms. Halter, you don't mind coming up here and listening to the board. 